I hope you're doing fantastic. Today, we're gonna to be diving into the three reverb wave technique inside of Dolby Atmos mixes. We're gonna be revisiting Dolby Atmos just a little bit today and discussing a really cool effect that you can use inside of Dolby Atmos. Hi, my name is Tyson. I'm a mastering engineer here at Dinosaur Dog Mastering. And today we're gonna to be diving into a little bit more about Dolby Atmos mixing and a very simple but very cool technique that we can use with reverb inside of our Dolby Atmos mixes. Before we dive into that though, I want to share my ultimate mixing checklist with you. It is free. It is in the description. The first link in the description will bring you to a page where you can download that. This will 100% allow you to get better and faster mixes because you're not going to be confused. You're going to be able to go from, from step A, B, and C all the way to Z in the correct order to ensure you're making the right changes at the right time to avoid all this back and forth and just unknown of what exactly to do when you open up your DAW. So this is going to guide you through the whole process. It's very simple, very streamlined. Again, just a checklist of things you need to do in every single mix. Okay, with that said, let's dive straight into the content of diving into Dolby Atmos mixing and exactly how to do this three hit reverb wave technique inside of your mix. Oh, just a quick note, make sure you're wearing headphones, otherwise you won't be able to monitor this properly. Make sure you're wearing your studio headphones and let's dive in. Today we're gonna to be going over what I'm referring to as the three reverb wave effect. And this is a really cool thing that you can do, not to be confused with my other technique in stereo mixing, which I refer to as the three reverb technique to create depth inside of your mix, super powerful technique. But today we're not talking about that, we're talking specifically about this kind of wave technique. And it's really cool, a good way to add some additional intrigue into your mix very easily, as well as adding some just movement inside of the mix as well. So let's dive in on exactly how to create this effect. And so we're gonna be adding this to our lead vocal. Another common instrument I've heard of it being used on is snare, which I think would be really cool as well, and probably have even more of an impact. In this session, I only have the drum stems, so I couldn't use the snare as an example, so I'm just gonna use the vocals, which also works great. So, the first step in creating this wave effect is to add three separate buses. So, I already have these buses set up. I have bus 27 bus 29 and bus 28 is the back. So I have front, middle and back as you can see here. I'm gonna be sending the entire signal from the lead vocal into these channels. So the first step once you have these set up is to pan them appropriately. I've already gone ahead and done that. The first one is panned in the front center as normal. The second one is panned hard right and left. So we have basically the middle uh, direct to ear speakers, the wide wideness, if you will, getting taken care of. And then the last one is gonna be panned straight into the back. I did reverse the spread, so the spread should remain consistent as we go back. But essentially we have these three set up. So we have the front, middle, and back. The front literally being the front of the mix, the middle being the middle, and the back being the behind your head part of the mix. So that's the first step. The second step is to go ahead and add a sample delay to each of these tracks. So the first one is really just to offset it a little bit. I'm just gonna do five and 20 milliseconds so that we create just a little bit more stereo effect here, stereo wideness in the mix. The second one, I'm going to add more. So we're gonna have, uh, let's see, 45 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds. And these aren't going into each other, remember? So we have to essentially create some delays that the first one is gonna be the least delayed, the back one's gonna be the most delayed. And then the last one is going, is going to be, so 45 plus 30 is 75-ish, and 60 milliseconds. Okay, there we go. And so now that we have these three set up, I'm just gonna play it for you so you can tell where those echoes are going where those delays, excuse me, are, are really going in the mix. And so we can get a lot more extreme with this if we want to. Um, and I might show an example of that here in a bit. But what we want to do here now is to add our reverb plugin. And so let's just do a nice concert hall just to make it obvious so you can hear everything going on. 
that looks good. It doesn't really matter what your reverb is. Whatever reverb you want to use is completely appropriate. And we can use the same exact reverb for each one. Actually, let me EQ this really quick so it's not quite so extreme here. Nice little high and low pass. All right, that's probably good. Copy those over. So they all should be the same. Yep, okay. So now we are all set up. We should have the front is the first reverb we hear, the middle is the second, and then the last is the, is the back reverb. So here we go, here is that effect. So it just creates a lot more kind of movement inside the back. The third thing that we can is, again, optional, but it's kind of fun to do, is adjust the distance of each of these reverbs. So I'm gonna just adjust them really quick so that, oh, that one's in the middle, so that's good. So the first one in the front is gonna be the closest, and then we're gonna get progressively further away as we move here in these reverbs so that it's gonna create even more of an effect of the back will feel more and more open as we as we move back. Um, I'm gonna also gonna raise this decay a little bit just to kind of fill up the back space. Again, because we have the direct sound in the front, it's all, it's all right if we fill up the back space a little bit more. So here is that. No. And so here is that effect in context. So that reverb is really helping just fill up the whole space inside of the Dolby mix. And so we, we have a lot more immersive experience with that going on. This is the basics of how to set this up. We can go as extreme as we want to. So let's go ahead and just play with this. Let's just do 150, 135. And let's call it 250 and 235. So we're just creating this massive space by increasing the delays here. So again, play around with this. This is a really cool technique that we can use to just create some movement, some very, very subtle movement inside of the mix. Um, again, really cool on snares or vocals, really any element that you want. The more snappy that element is, the more obvious this effect is going to be. So the vocals, because they're more drawn out and legato in nature. There, it's not gonna be as obvious, but this is still a very powerful technique. As you can hear, it really helps fill up the mix and make this vocal seem more immersive inside of the Dolby presence, if, it, if you will. Okay, with that said, thanks for watching this. If you found this at all helpful, don't forget to subscribe as I release videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also don't forget to pick up the ultimate mixing checklist down below. The first link in the description will bring you to a page where you can download the ultimate mixing checklist. All right. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.